الرحمن الرحيم. Every society, community, even every family needs some intelligent, level-headed people that can help that group solve their problems, find solutions, and and use their minds in a creative way. One of the people who was extremely gifted in this was a man by the name of Iyas ibn Muawiyah al-Muzani. He was a tabi'i and from a very young age his intelligence became, became known, it became prominent. When he used to go to school, he had some non-Muslim teachers as well. He had a non-Muslim math teacher and one day that teacher had invited some of his friends and they were having a chat and during that discussion they were saying, you know, these Muslims they say some pretty weird stuff. They say that, you know, when they, when they will enter into Jannah then in Jannah you don't need to go to the bathroom and you can eat whatever you want. They said, that doesn't make sense. How can you eat and eat and drink and never have to go to the bathroom? So they were having this discussion amongst themselves and this young boy Iyas was doing his work but he overheard them. So he went up to the teacher very respectfully. He says, if you give me permission, can I, can I say something? He said, sure. He said, I heard your discussion and I'd like to ask you a question. That is... All the food that you eat, is all of it passed out when you go to the bathroom? He said, no. He said, so what happens to the food that is not passed out? He said, well, it's, it's used in your body. He said, well, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can use some of the food and make it a part of your body, and make it utilized by your body, is He not capable of taking all the food and using it in your body? And they were, they didn't have an answer for that. They said, you know what, you're right. So, from that age people could see that this child is, is gifted and has that mind. And that's exactly what Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah was thinking when he became the ruler of the Muslim world. He called one of his governors, Adi ibn Artah, who was the governor of Basra, and said, look, Basra needs a good judge. So here are two people, I want you to speak to one of them and actually speak to both of them and make one of them the judge of Basra, the head judge or the judge of the Supreme Court of Basra. So the governor Adi, he called Iyas ibn Muawiyah, was one of them and the other was, his name was Qasim ibn Rabi'ah. So he said, look, I'd like to make one of you a, a judge of our courts. So. Both of them said that, well, the other one is more eligible. Even though being a judge was a position of great honor, it was also a position of, of great influence and, and wealth and all of those things. But neither of them wanted to accept that because neither of them wanted to answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah's court. So right away they both said that, no, my, my friend here, he is more eligible and, and just choose him, pick him. So, Iyas ibn Muawiyah said that, I have an idea to make your job easier. Why don't you go and ask two very senior people of Basra? And they'll tell you how eligible and how, how well equipped Qasim ibn Rabi'ah is for this job. And he took the name of two, two other tabi'is, Hassan Basri and Muhammad ibn Sirin. He said, if you go ask them, they will tell you that he is the right man for the job. And he took their name on purpose because they, did, they didn't really know him. So there's no way they could vouch for him. They could, and, but he knew that Qasim is very close to both of them. And they will vouch for him. So when Qasim saw this, he, he knew that, yes, if the governor goes and asks these two elders, right away they're going to vouch for me and I need to get out of this. So he took an oath. He said, Wallahi, Iyas is more eligible than me for this, for this task. Now when the governor heard his oath, he says to Iyas, well he's taken an oath and he can't be lying. <clears throat> and he said that look, if I'm speaking the truth and you believe me, then you have to appoint him. 
And if I'm lying, well then I'm a liar and you cannot make a lying person a judge. So you have no choice but to elect him as your judge. Now Iyas found himself cornered a little bit. But he knew how to get out. He said, look, it's like this. You took a man and you put him at the edge of Jahannam. And he's just about to topple over. So a man in that position will say anything to get out of that position, to be saved from that, from being pushed into that pit. And if he has to take a false oath, he will. And he will be saying to himself that, look, let me take this false oath. I'll make istighfar. I'll ask Allah to forgive me. But there's no way I can get forgiveness for this if I make a mistake as being a judge. So he used this oath to escape from this position. Now the governor is listening to this debate going on between them. And he said to Iyas, if you're clever enough to figure out what he just did, then that makes you the eligible person for this position. I am now appointing you as judge. So Iyas ibn Mu'awiyah was appointed as judge. And he ruled with, with fairness and with, with a very high level, level of cleverness. And this is very important for us because sometimes Allah has given us the, the mind, He's given us the brain, but we don't use it creatively. We limit our thinking. And we think in a very narrow scope with a tunnel vision. And we don't see things that, that actually are there. And that's why we have, sometimes we have trouble in our school. Sometimes we have trouble in our religious subjects. And sometimes we have trouble in life. It's just we're not thinking enough. And these people taught us how to do that. One case came to Iyas where a man, a good practicing pious man said that look, there is such and such person, everyone knows him, he's known to be very pious and so on, he's built quite a reputation for himself and now people have started depositing their, 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 their possessions, their, their treasures, their expensive things with him because they trust him. And I did the same thing. So if somebody is traveling, going out of town, they would deposit their valuables with this man. And if someone wanted to just, they were afraid that, you know, my wealth is not safe, they would give it to this man for safekeeping. He said, I did the same. I deposited a large amount of gold with this person. And the other day I went to get it from him and he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know, that, I don't know about this deposit. He said, no, I deposited on such and such day and such and such time. And, and he says, I don't know what to do. So the judge asked him, do you have any witnesses? Do you have any witnesses? He said, I can't remember any witnesses. I'm sure there, there were people there, but I, I can't think of who it possibly was. So he says, okay. For now you go home. I'll call you back tomorrow. So, he called that man who people were depositing all of this, all of their valuables with. He called him, he said, look, you know, I, I have something very important, very private to share with you. And um, he said, please, by all means. He said, look, I have come into uh, possession of a great deal of gold and I need to deposit it. And this gold belongs to orphans. And I need to place it somewhere for safekeeping. So I've heard about your reputation for, for safekeeping. And um, I want to deposit this with you. Is that okay with you? He said, absolutely, no problem. Anything for you. Allah has given me tawfiq to do khidmah for people. And I'm happy to help people out. He said, okay, so the day after tomorrow, I'd like you to come and bring two men because it's a lot of gold. So you come with your men. And you meet me at such and such place and I will give it over to you and you take it. He said happily. He goes back. Now the next day, Iyas had called that other person, the, the person who had made the claim, the person who was complaining. So he said, I want you to go to him today and ask him for your money. And if he does not give you the money, then you tell him that you're going to come to me and complain to me. And you're going to tell me what he has done. So the man went to him and he said, look, I'd like, I, I need my gold. 
He said, what gold? I don't know what you're talking about. Same story as before. He said, really? If you're not going to give it to me, then I'm going to Qadi Iyas and I'm going to tell him what you've done. He said, Qadi Iyas? Oh no. I have an appointment with him. He knows that I have an appointment with him tomorrow. He's going to give me a lot of gold. So if he goes and tells him now, this is going to get really, this is going to get really messed up. So he says, okay, fine, fine. I'll give it to you. Uh, don't, please don't say anything to anyone. He gave him his gold. He gave him a little bit extra. And he says, please, you know, just be happy, just be okay, this and that. He sends him on his way. And this man comes right back to Qadi Iyas. And he says that, Alhamdulillah, the man gave up my gold. The moment I took your name, he got very frightened. So Qadi Iyas then had that man called. He said, I want you to return the gold. I know what you've been up to. I know what you're doing. And if you do not return everyone's gold, and valuables to them right now and apologize to them I'm gonna do this and this and this and this too and the man coughed up all the money and he gave it so he was a very intelligent man so many stories I could go on for a long time just talking about the stories of intelligence of Qadi Iyas and Muzani but the big lesson here is that Allah has given us these minds we need to apply these minds in good things we need to use these minds sometimes all our cleverness all our cleverness and intelligence is used in just useless pursuits or sometimes getting in trouble or finding new ways of getting in trouble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that intelligence which also leads us to His pleasure.